A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Twenty Chapter Twenty Six Through Carnage to Joy. Some time later, Tyrus Tacarus and Kratos Kang report, turned to report that Zodonga had been completely reduced. The forces were entirely destroyed or captured. No further resistance was to be expected from Minin. Several battleships had escaped, but there were thousands of war and merchant vessels under guard of Farrakh warriors. The lesser halls had commenced looting and quarrelling among themselves, so it was decided that we collect what warriors we could, man as many vessels as possible with Dogoian prisoners, and make for Helium without further loss of time. Five hours later, we sailed from the roofs to the other dock building with a fleet of 250 battleships carrying nearly 100,000 green warriors, followed by a fleet of transports with our throats. throats. Behind us we left the stricken city in the fierce and brutal clutches of some 40,000 green warriors of the lesser hordes who were looting, murdering and fighting among themselves. At a hundred places they had applied the torch and columns of dense smoke were rising above the city as though it looked a blot from the eye of heaven the horrid sights beneath. In the middle of the afternoon we sighted the scarlet and yellow towers of Hallium. A short time later, a great fleet of the Zogalian battleships rose to the camps of the besiegers throughout the city, advanced to meet us. The banners of Helium had been strung from stern, stem to stern, of each of our mighty craft, but the Zogalians had used this, not used this sign to realise that we were enemies. Our green Martian warriors had opened fire upon them, almost as they left the ground. Their uncanny marksmanship, a ranked the bomb coming fleet with volley after volley. The twin cities of Helium, perceiving that we were friends, bent out two hundreds of vessels to aid us and began the first real air battle as sea ever witnessed. The vessels carrying our green warriors were kept circling above the contending fleets of Helium as though deadly air. Since their batteries were useless in the hands of the Pharax, who, having no navy, have no skill in the gun, naval gunnery, their short arm fire, however, was most effective. The final outcome of the engagement was strongly influenced, if not wholly determined, by the presence. At first, the two forces circled the same altitude, pouring broadside after broadside into each other. Presently, a great hull was torn in the heart. Hull was torn in the hull of one of the immense battlecraft from Zodonian camp. Alert, she turned completely over. The little figure of a crew plunging, turning, and twisting towards the ground a thousand feet below, then with sickening philosophy. She tore after them, almost completely burying herself in a soft loom, the ancient sea bottom. A wild cry was a resolution. A rose from Helimite squadron. With redoubled ferocity, they fell upon the Zogurnian fleet. By a pretty manoeuvre, two of the vessels of Helium gained a position over their adversaries, on which they poured upon them from their cannonball bomb batteries, a perfect torrent of exploding bombs. Then one by one the battleships of Helium succeeded in rising above the Dolians. In a short battle, the number of leaking battleships were drifting hopeless wrecks toward the high scarlet tower of Greater Helium. Several others attempted to escape, but they were soon surrounded by thousands of tiny individual flyers, having, and above each hung a monster battleship of Helium, ready to drop boarding parties upon their decks. Being but little more than an hour, the moment the victorious Zogolian squadron risen to meet us from the camp of besiegers, the battle was over. Many vessels of conquered Zogolians headed towards the cities of Helium and a prize cruise. They were an extremely pathetic side to the surrender of these mighty flyers, result of the old age custom, which demanded surrender should be signalled by the voluntary plunging to earth for the commander vanished vessel. One after another, the brave fellows, holding their colours high above their heads, leaped from the towering bows, their mighty craft to an awful death. 
Not until the command of the tired fleet took the fateful plunge, thus indicating the surrender of the remaining vessels, did the fighting cease, and used the sacrifice of brave men came to an end. We now signalled the flagship of Hellion Navy to approach, and when sh- she was within hailing distance, I called out that we had Princess Digea Taurus on board, and we wished to transfer to the flagship, that she might be taken immediately to the city. As if all import away of announcement bore in upon them a great cry arose from the decks of the flagship. A moment later the colours of the Princess of Hurium broke from a hundred points upon her her upper works. When the other vessels of the squadron caught the meaning of the signals flashed, they took up the world acclaim and flowered her colours in a gleaming sunlight. A fair ship bill upon us. As she swung gracefully to touch our side, a dozen officers sprang upon her decks. As the astonished gaze fell upon the hundreds of green warriors who now came forth from the fighting shelters, they stopped aghast by the sight of Colas Kane, who advanced to meet them. They came forward, crowding about him. Judge Tullus and I then advanced, and they had no eyes for her other than her. Her. She received them gracefully, calling each by name, for they were men high in esteem and service of grandfather, and she knew them well. Lay your hand upon the shoulder of John Carter, she said to them, turning to me, a man whom Harriam owes a princess, as well as a victory today. They were very courteous to me, and said many kind and complimentary things, but what seemed to press them more most was the one that aid of the fairest Ferex in my campaign for liberation to do a Dijo Taurus and a relief of Herlium. You owe your thanks more to another man than to me, I said. Here he is. Meet one of the pursuing greatest soldiers and statesmen, Tyrus Tagorus, Fat Drak, Jedek of Fat Fark. With some polished courtesy that had marked their manner toward me, they extended some greetings to the great Farak. Nor, to my surprise, he much behind them in ease of bearing or in courtly speech. Though not a godless race, Farrax was extremely formal with their ways, laying themselves amazingly to dignified and courtly manners. Dajia told us when aboard the flagship was much put out, I did not follow, but as I explained to her, the battle was but partly won. We still had land forces of besieging Dogodians to account for. I should, would not leave Tagoras until it had been accomplished. The commander of the naval forces, Hullium, promised at range have the armies of Hullium attack the city in conjunction with our land for attack. And so the vessel separating Dijon and Taurus was born in triumph back to the court of her grandfather, Taurus Mores, Derek of Hullium. A distance may our feet of transports with the ferrets of green warriors where they had remained during the battle. Without landing stages, it would be a difficult matter to unload these beasts upon the open plain. There was nothing else for it. We were put out for a point about ten miles from the city and began the task. It is necessary to lower the animals to the ground in slings. This work occupied the remainder of the day and half the night. Twice we attacked by parties of Dorgonian cavalry, but with little loss over. After that, they shut down, they they withdrew. As soon as the last threat was unloaded, Taras Tarkaras gave the command to advance, and three parties we met crept upon the Zogonian camp from the north, the south, and the east. About a mile from the main camp, we encountered their outposts, and so being a pre arranged, accepted, this was a signal to charge. A wild for us of cries, and missed the castle squealing of battle with ranged ferrets, we bore down upon the Zogonians. We did not catch them napping, but point found as well in tranced battle, lying confronting us. Time after time we opposed until, till noon, again the fear the result of battle. The Zogonians numbered nearly a million people, fighting men, gathered from pole to pole, wherever they stretched their ribbon like waterways, which, while well, pitted against them, were less than a hundred thousand green warriors, forces folium had not arrived, nor had we received any word from them. Just as noon we heard heavy firing all along the line between Zogolians and the cities. We knew that our much-needed reinforcements had come. 
Again, Taurus Taurus ordered the charge. Once more, the mighty threats bore in my heart to rise against the ramparts of the enemy. At the same moment, the battle line of Harriam surged over the opposite breastworks as though galleons in another moment. They were being crushed as, be- as two millstones. Nobody fought, but in vain. A plain before the city became a variable shambles ere the the last Sogonians surrendered, but finally the carnage ceased. Prisoners were marched back to Hullium. We entered the greater city's gates, a huge tri- tri- triumphal procession of conquering heroes. Broad event- avenues were lined with women and children, among which were a few men whose duties necessitated remaining within the city during the battle. We were greeted with an endless round of applause and showered with ornaments of gold, platinum and silver, precious jewels and city. I gone mad with joy. My fierce facts caused the wildest excitement and enthusiasm. Never before the army body of green warriors entered the gates of Helium, and now and they come now as friends, allies filled with red men. Which was rejoicing. That my poor service to Dario Choice had become known to the elements was evident by the loud crying of my name. And by loads of ornaments have fast upon me, my huge ferret, and we passed up the avenue to the palace. But you know, even in the face of the ferocious appearance of Wooler, the populace pressed close about me. I approached this magnificent pile. We were met by party officers, Gridus Wally and Chris Tarras, Tarkas, and his jeds from the Jerex, and Jed of his world allies, together with myself, his mountain occupied him to receive from Tardoros Moros an expedition expression of his gratitude for our services. The top of the state steps leading up to the main portals of the palace stood in the royal party and reached the lower steps one their number descended to meet us. He was almost perfect specimen of manhood, tall, straight and narrow, superbly muscled, with a carriage and bearer of a ruler of men. I did not mean need to be told that he was Tartarus Morris, Derek of Harriam. First member of the party we met was Tarus Tark Taras Tarkas, his first words were sealed forever, a new park friendship between the races. That Tartarus Morris, he said earnestly, may you meet the greatest living warrior Basilium, his private honour, but he may lay his hand on the shoulder of a friend. Ale is a far greater boon. Dragon Hulium returned Taras Taras Tarkas. He was a main man of another world to teach great warrior green warriors of Basilium, a meaning of friendship. To him we owe the fact that holds the Farrak can understand you, that you can appreciate the recuperate, hate the sentiments so gracefully ex- expressed. Torres Morris, then greeted each of the green Farrak direction dreads, to each spoke words of friendship and appreciation. As he approached me, he laid both hands upon my shoulders. Welcome, my son, he said. You are granted g- g- gladly. Without one word of opposition, the most precious jewel in all Hylium, yes, of all Persilium, but Bas- is sufficient, significant earnest of my esteem. We were then presented to Morris Catterjack, Jed of Lesser Hylium, a father of J.J. Torres. He had followed close behind Tidorus Moros, and had seemed more affected by meeting than had his father. He turned a dozen times, expressed his gratitude to me, but his voice choked with emotion. He could not speak, yet he had to. As I was to learn later, reputation for ferocity and fearlessness as a fighter was that remarkably even upon warlike Basilium. In common of all, had him, he birched his daughter, nor could he think of what she had escaped without deep emotion.